that he had something special. Um, we were in one of these holiday camps, must be about a year ago, um, and they had a full-size snooker table there. They had dart boards and different things in like the club facilities. He had a good technique and he'd never played before. His cue arm was straight, his chin was on the cue. He was kind of copying what I was doing a little bit, but he was copying it, but he accelerated it as well. He, was, he turned it into his own style. And where the other children were rolling balls in and mucking around on the table, he was hitting long pots the length of the table. My name's Lee Smith. I'm Dylan Smith's dad. A chap called Stuart Hardman. Um, I approached him because I knew him from years ago. He's a tailor in Southborough, Hardman and Hemming. And they have produced a fantastic three-piece suit for Dylan, free of charge, which would have cost about a £1,000 for a bespoke tailor suit, um, plus alterations and things like that. So they make him look the part when he, when he walks out to play. So they've been fantastic. How's it look, sir? It's better, that length's a lot better, isn't it? Yeah, trail. We have a sponsor called Tayem um, from Finland who have done some amazing things with their chalk. Um, and they're about £15 per block of chalk, which is quite incredible. And they send supplies of chalk, and you know, in return, we put a little patch on his waistcoat and say that they're the sponsor, which is good. There are no tournaments very close to us, so it does involve a lot of travelling. You know, we're on the road all day on a tournament day. Uh, we tend to go early before any traffic hits in 25, so we'll go at 6am on a Sunday. So it's quite fun, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of adrenaline, and it gets Dylan ready. He knows it's a big day, so it's all part of the build-up. We get there early and we go for breakfast and things like that. Um, so he knows that it's a full day out and that he's got a full day of snooker ahead. As I said, we're 6 a.m. start. Um, we're getting ready, getting dressed, put the tie on, everything, um, and then we're off. grab a coffee on the way, um, fill up with petrol if I've forgotten to do it, and then we're on the road. Traveling to tournaments, so the first one was Salisbury. At the moment, we're trying the tournament approach, so we're we're putting him out there to see to see how that goes. Q Stars is the only organisation that there is. Um, it's put together by a guy called John Hunter and Tim Dunkley, and they do a great job of attracting any of the yeah. good players that are in the south of England. And pretty much, when you go to their tournaments they are the best players in the south of England. It's a good thing to expose him at, to pressure of tournament play at an early age, so that it becomes more used to it. And, you know, it's another stepping stone in his progression. And then we like to register about half nine, get a set of balls out and 
do a little practice warm-up routine that we go through. Dylan plays, to describe his style, Dylan plays quite an aggressive style. He likes the entertainers. Um, unfortunately, I let him watch too much Alex Higgins and he watches a bit of Jimmy White. But he's kind of like, he brings a mix in with uh, Mark Selby for his all-round game. He also brings in to play Stephen Hendry with his solid potting, um, which he really enjoys. He's a f I think he's a flair player. I mean, it's too young to tell, really. He's just turning 11 next week. It's too young to tell, but from what some of the coaches say and some of the experts, he seems like a flair player, but what I would like is a flair player that wins lots of tournaments as well, and he's made a great start in that too. Um, then registration, that's practice at 9.30. Registration is about 10.30. Uh, and then Dylan will find out who's playing in the group stages, which is a round robin, so he'll play everyone in that group. I'd say the best 12-year-old looks like Oliver Sykes. He's a very composed young man, and he's a good model, actually. He's very unflappable, and he looks like he's in control even when he's not on the table. So Dylan observes all these players and... Callum MacDonald, Elliot Weston. ...soaks up what they're doing, how they compose themselves and things like that. He's a good player to watch, although he's only 10. Sometimes you see the dads drifting towards watching him as well. And some of the other England players will stop when they're walking past and watch him, which is a great sign. He's great to watch. And if we can get the wins lined up, then he'll be very successful. Um, but I hope he can keep his attitude together and his strength of play to win those finals now. He's a total table player, so he's not afraid to smash a pink ball in, negotiate his way around the colours to land back on the red down here. So he's a, he's a whole table player. All about big breaks, although I think he will get them. He's got about 78 on the lineup. Um, he's got 33 in competition, which is pretty good for a 10 year old, I'd say. He's only been playing for about 10 months, so he's quite advanced for 10 months. And a lot of people are interested in him and they do like to watch him play. He's very close to winning tournaments. Um, milestones in the future, so maybe at 12 or something, a bit like Oliver Sykes, it would be nice if he was selected for England, which would be great if, if the England selectors were listening. Um, um, 16 to go professional, maybe that is too young. You know, if he's doing his GCSEs at 16, I'd say do your GCSEs and then maybe turn pro 17. If turning pro happens at 22, it's going to happen when he's ready. Even with some sponsorship, you've still got costs. You've got 
you know, wear and tear on your car, you've got the distance travelled, you've got hotel stays, you've got food, drink, everything that's involved in that. The costs do mount up. The coaching cost is fairly high, as most coaching is. We do get a little bit of sponsorship, but we could always use more because I think he's got something special and hopefully the main sponsor will see that in him as well. Yeah, in tournaments there is a lot of hanging around. There's a lot of dads milling around, mums milling around, coffees being made, bacon rolls being shouted out. Um, and then you have to control the adrenaline because what it is, is they get very excited when their name's called. They're so ready to go that they can actually underperform because they're too pumped up for it. So we have a little few things in place which will calm him down before actually plays his match. The big learning curve for us, we're learning on every tournament as we go. Um, I would say about tournament play, it's a lot of pressure for young kids. Um, there's kids punching the air, there's kids in tears in the car park. It's a really tough thing for a parent to go through sometimes. Dylan's got a good, tough temperament. He's brave, he'll take on shots that a lot of kids wouldn't take on. He's not really involved in a lot of safety play, which is good for his age. He knows that he needs safety play to win a match, but he doesn't like to get involved in it too much is what we learned from Stephen Hendry's videos that we look back on. Main channel challenge with the finals is keeping his good cue action, his good attitude, his good timing all the way through the final. Not to peak at any one point, but just to have a consistent tempo and a consistent attitude all the way through, and that's what his coaches are working on. Pressure is a big thing for children to handle, and it's a big thing for parents to watch. And I'm learning as I'm going along. I really don't. You know, it's really upsetting to watch him get upset. Um, so long as he learns from all of those episodes, he'll become a stronger player. And if you're going to achieve anything, there's ups and downs along the way, isn't there? You know, I'm not a big fan of sports day at school where everyone gets a medal. I think it should be the best runner that gets the medal and the best thrower that gets the medal. And the sort of overly PC world we live in where everyone's a winner doesn't really set the kids in good stead to compete in the future. So Dylan's understanding winning and losing at the sharp end. We left at 6am. He was playing in the final at 9pm. We got home at midnight and then he had to get up for school in the morning. So <laughs> you can see it's a long day out and it's quite a stress on him. Um, he, Dylan is a real fighter and, and he'll do well in competition play, I believe. Maybe I put pressure on him to compete, to perform. I hope I don't. I try to steer it in a way where he's asking me to play again and when's the next tournament. I would rather it came from him than me pushing him. Because I know a lot of parents can, you know, totally fry their kids by putting too much pressure on them, and I'd hate to do that. We just sort of push on and push through. Still my son at the end of the day, I'm proud of him, whatever he does.